the problem with the brand that we're running right now is everything is down to a science. Everything is very automated. We've done everything that we've wanted to do. At least, you know, I have, I asked Julia, she's said the same thing. So when you get to a point like that, how much more can you do? And the last two months have been pretty scattered and, you know, we haven't met for like uh, 45 days, six weeks. So yeah, that, <laughs> that's what's had me kind of down. You know, I feel like I'm hitting a wall and ups and downs and it, it was just very hard to focus. So it's like a breakup. <laughs> if we don't even know why we broke up. <laughs> like a breakup. What's up guys, Chris here. This video has been highly requested and I'm excited to finally make it happen. In this video, I tell you my story with focus on the entrepreneurial side of things. Three years ago, I left my day jobs and dropped out of college to build a business online. That soon evolved into it actually happening, generating $10 million with e-commerce over two and a half years. And with that, growing a YouTube audience to 100,000 subscribers in six months time. If we go walk through the process of a sock, I don't know if you want to show that at all. Probably yeah, minimal, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Start, start. Are you recording? Well, I'm saying we can open the door on the other Brennan, How long do you want these answers? I'm going to break this all down year by year. Hey everybody, it's Chris and Julia here, your future millionaires, isn't that right? Julia? Yes! If you enjoy the content, all I ask is that you make the like button turn blue. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you like this and want to see more. But with that, go ahead and sit back, relax, we have a lot to get to. The story starts in 2015. I was working at Kroger, stocking shelves for about 30 hours a week. Life at this time was simple, not too much to worry about. I was making $800 a month, going to school to pursue a job in broadcast journalism. This was a career I really wanted. Even going back to high school, in my video class, some friends and I were creating a show for our school news. Here in Swords Creek, the Swords Creek hometown days. 2015 was two years after I graduated, about a year into working at Kroger, that's when I met Julia, who's now my business partner. It doesn't look so good. so busy. I was like, are you sure you want this background? There's a whole list on the V5. Okay, okay, we're planning to do this this week or this month. Now, I'm not one to believe in these kinds of things, but literally, I think the stars aligned with this one. However the saying goes. She was stocking shelves in Frozen. I was in dairy, so anytime we worked, we were within close range. And when you work beside someone like that, you're bound to have some conversations. So that happened, and we just started to connect. One time when we were working and having a conversation about goals, I mentioned that I wanted to have my own TV show one day or be an anchor on Good Morning America. Julia was going to school for business and marketing and mentioned the goals of becoming a CEO. I thought it sounded really cool and I looked into the career field more and the rest is history. Now making $800 a month at 20 years old was really depressing. All right here we have a mirror apparently bolted on here by, you guessed it, screws. My car was falling apart. I was living at home. I needed to make more money and I really wanted to figure out how to do it online. So that's when I got into researching and just seeing what was out there, testing different things. And eventually I had all these different side gigs and one of them was doing voiceovers on Fiverr. Get ready to be entertained. To this day, I don't know how and why my voice sounded like that, but I'm thankful for it. The voiceovers I really enjoyed. I even built this cardboard box with the soundproof foam inside and that's how I'd record. Text broker, another one, basically writing articles word for word, getting paid by the word. User testing, one of my personal favorites. I would screen record my experience on different websites and answer a variety of questions. All these gigs were tedious and I was severely underpaid, but I still did them and $800 a month soon turned into $1,200 a month. 2016 comes around and by this time I'm working three part-time jobs while still doing all these random side gigs in my spare time. August comes and this was the month I discovered e-commerce. In 10 months, not only did I generate $2.4 million, at the time, you just had a few big gurus like Adrian Morrison, he was one of them. Ally Express paired with Shopify was starting to take off and this idea of making a living online was becoming an actual thing. And it was such a cool thing seeing it unfold. The kid is the boss. See, he knows it. Among all the adults, his chief employee, this 30 year old. I had two games that were both uh, 
like number one trending apps like everywhere in the world. Being CEO at 16 has already made Ben a bit of a celebrity. This was lots of bugs we had before we launched. You're obviously making enough money to, to employ your mum. Still waiting for that pay rise. You've now run six online stores. Um, when did you hit your big break and when did you realise, holy crap, I've actually made it? We've certainly done more than a million dollars in sales. I'll tell you that now. And it took me 60 seconds. I stand to make 35 bucks in profit in my little small scale test. I'm speechless. I, I, I want you for my son. <laughs> so when it came to learning the information to make this happen, I didn't buy any courses. I learned everything online through YouTube and Facebook groups. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Ecom Empire's Academy. My thought process was if I could just get the basic knowledge and just put it in motion, I'll be able to learn along the way. Julia and I, we got into this actually taking out loans so that we didn't have any cash issues. We started our first Shopify store called Case Overstock, selling phone cases, total fail. We thought the idea of sending stuff from China to a customer was a bit scammy and we wanted to create a good experience for customers. So we ordered all the inventory to the US, everything that was sold inside of the, the store and a significant amount of money was spent here. And all said and done, we only sold about $400 worth of cases with the store. To this day, I still have all that unsold inventory. We decided to give it another try, this time actually drop shipping. I had seen these dog safety belts going around the internet at the time and thought maybe it'd be worth a shot. So we built this store called Friendly Paw your typical dog store with AliExpress products. Originally, I was going to try to run Facebook ads, but I heard about this thing called influencer marketing from this guy named Dan De Silva. I remember thinking, this is brilliant. Why is nobody else talking about this? I gave it a try, paid $40 for a shout out and hundreds of dollars of sales within hours. I was obviously shook by this, that it really did work. I was in one of my college classes at the time and the post went up, my phone was getting all these notifications and I knew right then and there, this is going to work. This is going to be my thing. Fast forward three months with just the influencer marketing, the store got to around $40,000 in revenue. Running the store had its ups and downs. I was still learning influencer marketing at the time and I was keeping a spreadsheet with all the good and bad influencers that we were testing and we would spend what we would need to spend to test different influencers. Eventually we narrowed down to five influencers that we used at all times. I can't remember what the profit was, but it was enough for me to quit all my day jobs and drop out of college coming into 2017. Start of 2017, I was fully self-employed, pretty much forcing myself to make this work or I can't pay my bills. We sold Friendly Paw for $5,000, started a few more drop shipping stores after that, and this was our income strategy for the first eight months of the year. These drop shipping stores were no way sustainable, so the income was up and down. It was in August when we were feeling a little burnt out with the whole AliExpress model. When you're sending customers product from China, it's incredibly hard to build a brand. It's broke. I look like a Snapchat filter. <laughs> Customer service was a nightmare. Customer retention was laughable. I'm not a huge fan, guys. <laughs> so cheap ones. Not so much into these. I am cringing as I think back to it. Now, I'm not saying that shipping stuff from China is bad, but branding is definitely harder. <laughs> so it was at this time that we discovered print on demand, a model that was just as easy. So working with a big print shop that I only pay if a customer pays me. They ship straight to the customer right inside the United States. All we have to do is tell them what to print. One thing I'm really big on is product personalization. In 2017, there wasn't much out there like there is today. We make it really easy and affordable to turn all your memorable t-shirts into t-shirt quilts. Project Repat was a really big one using personalization. We found a few stores catching this trend very early on with a pretty cool idea, so we ran with it and just innovated along the way. The first month, we did $19,000 in sales, almost all with influencers. October is when I learned Facebook ads, and that shot us up to $50,000 in a single month. And then November cups, and we did $200,000 in a single month. So we're obviously taking some pretty large payday distributions at this point. We ended 2017 knowing that we figured something out. Now we just needed to keep it going and get this business to the next level. Twenty eighteen rolls around and we're able to do six figures per month the entire year, ending off at almost three million dollars in sales. Straight off the PL, almost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in net profit, so about fifteen percent. Now I'll be honest with you, a lot of this year we just kind of coasted along. We did the usual things a store owner should to keep things looking neat and nice and 
to get sales. But it was a lot of surface level stuff. Facebook ads performed really well. Competition was very minimal. It wouldn't be until 2019 that we actually kicked things into high gear. The experience gets better. More people are coming back. More people are telling their friends and the business is getting bigger. The team is getting bigger. 2019 was by far my favorite year. We not only took our e-commerce brand to the next level, but I was able to build a YouTube audience to 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy. All right, let's cut to the chase, Tim. Let's start with e-commerce. At the very start of the year, we knew we wanted to explode things. We had just gone through our 2018 holiday season and seeing the numbers that we were doing, it really opened up our eyes to the possibilities. What if we could get moderately similar numbers throughout the rest of the year? We knew that if we wanted to try and do that, we'd have to invest into customer experience, better marketing. These things were starting to become pretty vital and this e-commerce landscape was almost becoming an adapt or die situation. GQ style talks about shopping as voting with your dollars. And really, that's what it is. Right away when I opened the box, the first thing I noticed was how pretty the packaging is. They seem to like experiences more than they like tangible things. Aren't they so cute? Imagine you're in a store and you're looking at a TV and you're going, gosh, I want to buy that TV. You stand in front of it, you take out your phone, you go on the site and you read the reviews. The most accessed information than anyone else. So they're thinking more about things, they're looking at it differently. The younger you go, the more validity social has because it's more normal. For a long time, you could get away with long shipping times or giving a poor quality product. This was completely flipped upside down. Now, as we all know, Shopify is an e-commerce platform and it's a platform that really just kind of grows a lot of legitimate long-term businesses. People all over the country learning a hard lesson after ordering some small web retail merchandise during the holiday. I waited, I just kind of get this these fake gums on here. Multiple customers have reached out to Way31 to tell us that they never got the product they ordered. Because they overpromise and underdeliver, and they have horrible customer service, or I shouldn't say even customer service is non-existent. I really feel like some of these companies are just trying to get into the industry, into the the niche, and just trying to capitalize on some of the profits, and they just put a bunch of shit together. And I fully started to realize how much bigger and public these issues were becoming when something very close to home happened. It's pretty easy to break. Mid-2019, the Attorney General right here in my own state opened an investigation with a dropshipping store known as Black Pots. And get this, the store was being run by two 16-year-olds. This story was getting some publicity. You know, they're acting like young kids, right? They're not treating this like a legitimate business. Customers were fed up with long shipping times and doing the usual, like going to the BBB and trust pilot, complaining on social media. Shipping sucks and their communication sucks and everything else sucks. But you can only do so much of that. And word eventually got to the attorney general. The manufacturer of the pods that they were using is out, obviously it's from China. Yeah. You know, so I know that they were having some issues with that. While the business was being investigated, it was later discovered they were violating Michigan's Consumer Protection Act in several instances. The right hand side, black pot, stopped working correctly. You get in touch with the company, see how you can fix the problem. So that's what I did. I emailed them once, twice, three times. Are you guys almost caught up? Gonzalez called his son. Isaiah told me he's turned off the advertisements in order to take care of existing orders with his supplier. Honestly, don't think that this situation would have went this far if they just had to put out like a PR release or just messaging and emailing their customers. Apparently they were just leaving them completely blind. This was the time I started my investigation into my favorite e-commerce brands and how we can model them. And I was going deep. The snow teeth whitening at home system. Snow from social media activity to active ads running on Facebook, what was the experience like ordering on the website to actually receiving the product? What emails did I get from them? That's when I hired Jude as a brand manager to help keep track of all of this. What were you finding when it comes to the types of like reviews? What kind of patterns you're finding in your best judgment with the top 10? I oversee the marketing in the business and up until 2019, I was running all of the ads, but it was starting to take a lot of time and I knew that somebody could do it better than me. 
So we hired a marketing agency and this decision happened to double our sales within the first month. We invested in Latin content, new team members, a fully custom website template. We spent over $100,000 on software development for our customers and team. As the brand was getting more reach, we had more opportunities to partner with some pretty big influencers. And this was a no-brainer, considering it was the direction most brands were moving. Many businesses are now looking for new ways to get a following for their products. As you guys know, I love Sugar Bear Hair Hair Vitamins. It's expected to become an $8 billion business by 2020. Now let's talk about YouTube. Summer of this year, I wanted to reactivate my passion for creating content. Recording, Andrew? Yeah. So we, and I'm glad I did. Besides creating a nice side income, this is truly a puzzle piece of my life that has been filled. Creating videos on the topic of e-commerce was no question. The problem was making them entertaining. What's going on everyone, Chris here, and in today's video, for many years, the standard format within the niche was sitting in front of a camera and talking, and it's worked, don't get me wrong. A lot of the bigger YouTubers in the space have grown their channels by doing this. The problem though, more creators were coming into the space, and even more now. And following that same format with a little differentiation just makes it really hard to grow. And thankfully, Julia, she told me at the very beginning that the videos weren't good enough and it, it was pushing me further and further to find a system, a style, and thankfully, that day came. In this video, Betty's gonna be the face of the new brand. My first few months on YouTube had little results, no matter how good I thought the videos were. I learned at the time to really grow your channel, you just have to hustle your way to a thousand subscribers and then YouTube will start to promote you. And in September, I had one video get picked up by YouTube, the algorithm, and got 40,000 subscribers in a month. I was a little shook. The channel was approved for monetization in September and went on to make $8,000 per month the rest of the year. It was at that time I converted my old office, where I'm at right now, into a studio space and I turned my kitchen pantry into an editing room. Best decision yet. A lot of people, they go through things and I, I kind of, you know, I was going through a lot of things for the better half of the worst half, I should say, of uh, 45 days. And I'm kind of back on top of things now it all goes back to stagnancy and complacency, feeling pretty much useless when it's so much a part of you and you're doing it for so long, for so many years. It hurt. Ups and downs, and it, it was just very hard to focus. Ego gets attached to things that it's built stories about itself around. And you built a really good story about two years of being a success, and now that it's time to let that shit go, you're... <sighs> what is that next challenge going to be um you know I, <laughs> i'm open to anything so we're two months into 2020 and there's a lot i want to share but first we ended 2019 with our strongest holiday season yet hitting our three million dollar target our facebook ad spend accounted for 18 percent of that so basically it was right where we wanted it to be of course i'm sure this all looks great but it's not all glamour I was and am hesitant to talk about this, but after thinking about it, we're all human and I know for a fact this isn't just isolated to myself. Something I think happens a lot in the entrepreneur space is wrapping yourself or your identity up in something. And it could be money, it could be success. So we were so wrapped up in success and also in punishment. Money equals success. Oh my God, the GC, the tail is lit up. And we want people to perceive us as successful, so flexing. If it's not money or success, it could be a business that you run, which happens to be my case. Um, are you happy? Um, there's no reason not to be happy, right? But there's definitely moments that uh, feels like kind of, like I don't know, just like empty. A lot of January, I was pretty down and in bed and, you know, not to focus too much on the details, but a little out of my element. The realization was that this thing I've been holding on to for so long and caring for like my own child is something I'm not challenged by anymore. Therefore, my passion is now lackluster. You know, the money is not what gets me up each day as long as the bills are paid. Now my mental health is back in line and I've been feeling really good. My focus right now is finding my new challenge, whether that be starting a skincare brand or selling supplements. And I plan to document all of that right here on the channel. Looks like a one product store and this looks like it was taken a a tool for male or female. You put it up against your face where you're 